So today we'll be looking at uh, chapter, is chapter 11, chapter 11 of the book, which is all about uh, an introduction to, to al Magda. So for the learning objective in which we'll be looking at today, we'll be looking at the introduction to our markdown. Then I'm going to explain the structure of the R markdown document. Then we are also going to look at how we are going to format the text then using the R markdown. We are also going to look at how to include the, the R code chunk out to all the various R code chunk options. Uh, we are going to look at that. We are also going to look at how to include figures in our markdown, then how to include tables. Then also I am going to uh, do a brief uh, walkthrough on how to what, compile this document because uh, the actual main aim for this section is to give us a walkthrough on how to compile our notes so that we can push it uh, up to GitHub so that make uh, the whole process uh, to be easy. So, but uh, feel free uh, to jump in at any point uh, to also contribute or to ask questions any area that is uh, not clear. So the, for the brief introduction is that the, the R Markdown is like a tool in which uh, we use in communicating our research finding to stakeholders or to our own, uh, to other collaborators, because the R Markdown documents are, there are three main components in which we can see in the R Markdown document is composed of three uh, different sections because we have the YAML, which we'll be looking at that in the subsequent sections, we'll be looking at the code chunk, and also we'll be looking at uh, the text. Uh, just as I read, put down here in the note, I say is for communicating uh, to decision makers who want to focus on the conclusions and not the code behind the analysis. We also use our markdown to what collaborate uh, with other data scientists who are interested in both your conclusions and how you reach them. We also see that our Magda is an environment in which to do data science as a modern day lab notebook, because we can use uh, the R Markdown, we can use it in teaching, we can maybe in workshop, we can embed our code, we can take, uh, we can use it to do a lot of demonstration. So, uh, so how do we create the R Markdown document. So let me just quickly go over to my R Studio. So in order for us to create an R Markdown document, is to just click on the file, and we say the new file. From the new file, uh, we take the R Markdown document. So once we take the R Markdown document, so we need to give it a title. So let me say introduction. Introduction, sorry, introduction to our markdown. So the author, we give it the, the author is going to be your name, then the dates, we leave everything. The default uh, templates for our markdown is always the HTML, which is always the default template. But we also have PDF, but there is a note here for PDF. We need to install either tiny text, which is a lightweight uh, markdown, or we can, if we are not going with the tiny text, we can go, we can choose to use mid text. But for I, I, I prefer tiny text because the syntax is for me to use tiny text so that I can compile uh, my markdown. So PDF, you also have the word template. So whichever templates in which uh, you want to use, it's just to pick one here, then you just click on OK. So once you click on OK, the R Markdown documents, we are going to get this syntax. This is what we are going to get. The first level here is the what we call uh, the YAML, and the YAML stands uh, for yet another mark, uh, markup language. And in the YAML there, we have some various, this is the default template in which we created. Here we have title where in the title I said, uh, we have introduction to our markdown. Then for the author, it's going to be my name. Then for the date, rsys.date, this is going to print 
uh, the current dates. If I should, I am to compile these documents and the default outputs, there is HTML documents. So within this, we have the code chunk and this code chunk is a setup. So include equals to false, though I'm still coming back to this where I'll explain the various chunk options. So I'm just, and here we can specify the default chunk option that we can use in controlling uh, subsequent chunk. Maybe we I have, I have embedded two, maybe I said, let me say for instance, I embedded like 200 chunk in my R markdown documents. So I can control, I can say the global chunk that is going to control subsequent chunk in the R markdown document, which is always very useful and is going to help us to avoid a repetition. So we can just set one default chunk option. We use it in controlling other chunk options. So yeah, in the R markdown document, the third part of the R markdown documents is it where we have the text. So in the text there, you see I have the two pound sign there. Uh, I am still going to explain this is the for the for the headers. So this shows that this this is the level two header. If you have one pound sign, it's going to be uh, the level one header. So this is going to be the text in the R Markdown documents. This is going to, if you render this, this is going to be text. And in this same default templates, we have the link uh, to, to the R Markdown, the R Markdown studio.com. This is a URL that has been embedded in these documents though in the subsequent section. I am going to explain this in more detail. Then for in this same default templates, they have double star and the knit. This is when we knit these documents, this is going to be bold. The double pound sign there, if I should compile the documents, uh, this is going to be bold. In the third option here, I think, uh, let me go back to my notes. Let me go back to my notes and continue. I will come back uh, to this. I will come back to this when I'm explaining. Where is my notes? Okay. Maybe maybe we'll go on that later a bit. But yes. Yes, another mark. Uh, Yalm, Yalm can be tricky. Like you have to really uh, respect the style. Like no uh, particular, uh, for example, it doesn't like uh, some uh, some characters or uh, and you have like uh, no don't put like too much spaces just follow the style uh, because like yes, and, yes, uh, yes. indexation it's very strict on that so yes. this is like a lot of time uh, i spend debugging because like i have like <laughs> a, a word spaces sometimes so this is a tricky part i think this is yeah i think uh, yeah, what may I normally do is that i'll just set error to be true so that i can i can easily go through the entire document to see where i am getting the error then I'll now come back there and fix it. Because the default is error, I think uh, the default template is error is set to false. So it's for yeah. me to enable that to be true so that the document will run through. Then I'll now later on, I will come back. When I look at the outputs, I will know what is causing the error. Then I'll go back to that specific area and then I fix that. Because debugging our markdown can be very difficult because Okay, so this is where I was. So I will come back uh, to that. So we have seen, uh, taken, we have seen the various steps in which we can use to create a just a default temp R markdown document. So in the subsequent step, I think I have talked about about this. Yeah, we set uh, the structure of the markdown document, which we have seen that with the markdown document, uh, it contains uh, three sections which we have the yaml which is always at the very top level there in the documents is the yaml we also have we are also seeing that the markdown document also contain the text the text which is this and it also contain uh, the code so the code that we have different code chunk where we can put it can be an r code chunk it can be python code chunk it can be batch it can be because r markdown it can run around, I think uh, is around 43 or so languages in which we can run in the R Studio ID. So, 
So I also say that in the font size to specify, we use this argument font size, we can use it to specify the different font size in which uh, we want in our R markdown documents. And we also we can also put the TOC here, which it stands for table of contents. We can set it to true. If in the actual output we want to create, if we are interested, we need to get uh, the table of contents. We can just say the TOC, we set it to true. So in the final output in which the, 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 it would meet, we are going to get a table of contents. So this, I got this uh, default uh, YAML from the, from the book uh, by uh, Paul Moraga. So this is a default template in which I got uh, from the book. I also include it in my own slides. So what, how I was able to do this is that after pasting it, I just, in the chunk option, I set the val to the equals four so that it won't be evaluated. So that's how I was able to print this. So here I set the title of the document is an R Markdown document. The author is the author of this book, which is Paola Moraga. Then the rc.date, which will print uh, the current date and the font size, I set it to 12 points. Here for the output format, I specify, which is uh, the default template is always HTML documents, but we can also have PDF. We can also have Word. Whichever templates uh, you want, you can specify the templates there. Uh, the TOC equals true. What this is done, going to do is that if we, we are to meet it. We are going to get table of contents. So the depth of the table of contents, I set it uh, to be two. So let me look. And we can also use uh, the Kenneth R package. It contains several functions in which we can use uh, to render. If we do not want to use the NITs in the R Studio ID, we can use the NITs R function. If we do not want to use the render key in the R Studio ID, we can use this function uh, that is coming from the Kenneth R package. Then within this function, we can pass in the inputs, which is the, the markdown documents in which uh, we want to compile, then we are now going to specify the outputs, which is can be Word, it can be PDF, it can be HTML. So whatever output format we specify here is going to render that document to that output format. So what it's going to do is that the, we have a markdown file. So we, we are passing that markdown file to the Kenneth R package. So Kenneth R package is going to pick uh, the markdown file and it's going to render it into a markdown. Then that markdown, Pandoc will now pick that markdown file and render it into uh, the various output formats, which can be Word, which can be PDF. So that is just the logic. I think I have one slide where I showed uh, that template. So now, text uh, formatting in our markdown. So for us, in order for us to format, uh, the R markdown, we need to write plain uh, markdown syntax. So we can, if we want to write our text to be in italics, if you have specific text, you want it to be in italics, it's just to surround it with two star, these two pound sign. So if you should render the document, it's going to be in italics. We can also use underscore, two underscore at both end, it's still going to be, uh, in italics. So that is also another option. So if you want to do it in bold, is to surround it with double pound sign or double underscore at both sides. If you have to render the document, uh, it's going to be bold. The text is going to be in bold. But um, in the book, I also we also the author also talk about how to how to embed code in line because maybe we we want to reference some certain thing, maybe we have a data frame and we want to make certain reference on the that maybe they want to get the number of rows of that data frame, we can just do in line, which is to surround it uh, with this, uh, this uh, back ticks at both ends. Maybe we can just say R, we say maybe X plus Y, but in this case, I am setting the eval equals to four. That's why it's not evaluating this. So uh, it's just for demonstration. So we can just pass in our, our arguments there, so if we should render the document, we are going to get uh, the output. So also for the level headers, for the headers, as I said earlier, this pound sign, 
So in base R, I think in R, pound sign is for comments, but in markdown, the pound sign are the different levels of edda. The one pound sign is going to be level one edda, which is going to be very big. And two pound sign here stands for, we know that that is going to be our level two edda. Three pound sign is going to be uh, the third level edda and so on. If you have up to 10 pound signs, so the more then as we are up, as we are increasing, so the text becomes uh, smaller. The text will go because level one edda will be big, level two edda, it will reduce a little bit. So that is how the text will keep on uh, reducing. So we are we also have the ordered and unordered list. So in order for us to include the unordered list, we, we have three, the book recommend three options, either a, a, a iPhone, a star or a plus. We can use either of these when we have an unordered list in our, in our document, within our markdown documents. Maybe we are compiling a note. We want to just make a list of some certain thing. We just, we just have to put a dash, then we just put the text there. Put another dash, we put the text there. But if it's going to be an ordered list, for the ordered list, we are going to have maybe one and a period, then we put the items there. We also have two and a period, we put the list items there. So when we need it, it's going to be in this form. It's going to be ordered. The, the, the output is going to be ordered. We can also include a, a math equation within the R markdown. So for us to achieve that is to, is to surround it with this two dollar sign at both ends, then we can just write our equation inside. Is to surround it with two dollar sign, then we embed our equation. Then if we are to render this, it's going to give us, uh, this is the output we are going to get. If we are to render the equation, we are going to have uh, this output. So within uh, the document, we can embed a link. Maybe we want to embed a link to a certain, okay. Yeah, just, just to stop here, mm -hmm. you have like, um, maybe we'll touch that later, but Markdown have very flavors. Like it's not like you, <clears throat> you have like a, like some white papers that describe this, this spec, but some like, uh, Air, Air Markdown use a particular flavor, but in some websites and some others, like you can have another flavors of Markdown. Markdown is a, like a old stuff, and then Air Markdown have its own flavors. On this, like what we are using is LaTeX. I never know if I pronounce correctly. Yes, 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 yes. So it's it's a uh, <clears throat> if uh, some people don't know it, like they should Google it, and and you have like a ton of uh, I, I'm 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 using it a lot. So some of it's I remember some of it I never remember so I, I'm googling it like how to do fraction with LaTeX and you will find the the, the slash fraction curly bracket curly bracket the first curly bracket in the denominators and the second curly bracket denominators are you seeing like in uh Uluafi presentation and if I think if you put just one dollar it will be like inline um mathematics yes yes what? yes but yes, this is super helpful. And uh, yes, uh, but because be careful at times, also. Yes, I at times I want to do this. At times I will get stuck. I have to go back to Stack Overflow and look for a solution. The <laughs> same. I start going to Stack Overflow to check for a solution. Yeah, you have lots in Stack Overflow. So like, <laughs> uh, I think LaTeX have a good wiki. If you take LaTeX yes. wiki, it have like a very um, good explanation. Uh, also, I think if you do, you should like not let space between uh, the dollar bear. Uh, like uh, I think the um, the equation need to be close to the dollar bear. If yes, you yes, yes. Yeah. White space yes. dollar white space. It in can I think it doesn't work well. No, it will not work. There is okay. there is no space. No space. So sometimes I'm uh, done is tricky. I'm um, not done in like a tech is tricky. But we are, so, so great. So uh, I learned a lot of stuff. Cool. Okay, so I think I was here. Yeah, I was trying to say we can also embed a link within the document. Maybe we want to uh, share that. Link. We want somebody. You can just put a text here within the square brackets, 
uh, which is we can just the text in the square bracket i can say this is a link then within this i can just drop the link there so when i'm ready on the documents so we just click you just need to click on this r markdown it will take you uh, to these sites i think that is that for this section okay so this is the i think this section is all about uh the the code the R code chunks. So there are different uh, different uh, chunk options uh, we, which we are going to look at and which we are going to use uh, in customizing our R Markdown document. So here, yeah, the first one in which I'll be talking about, we have echo equals false. So if you set echo equals false in the R Markdown document, if you do render the document, is going to evaluate the code, but in the final output, uh, the it will not the code will not appear in the final output. I think this is very useful if you are communicating uh, to stakeholders who want to send them a report. The stakeholders there that do not have maybe programming background is always good. We set uh, the echo equals false because they are mainly interested in the result, not the code behind the analysis. So it's better uh, we set the echo. We put that form argument, we set it into false in the chunk option. So yeah, the second one here is eval equals uh, false. So when we use eval equals false is that uh, if you render the documents, that particular chunk, it will not be evaluated. And if that particular chunk will not be evaluated, there will be no outputs because it will compile the document, but that particular chunk in which we say eval equals false, that chunk will not be evaluated. So once we are rendering, it will not be evaluated. Uh, we also have include equals false. If we set include equals false, we render the documents, uh, the code will be evaluated, but in the final outputs, we will not get anything. Every there will be no output for that specific chunk. Maybe if you, and if we set this in the global options, that is the global option that I specified earlier, in your final output, you will not get anything and you'll be, you'll be shocked. Uh -uh, I, you have done, I have done my analysis. I can't, the, the markdown has rendered, but I cannot see the report because you have set include equals false because there will be no outputs. So it will just be a just blank, uh, document. So we can also have another argument, result equals hide. If you hide this, means that the code will be evaluated, but in the final output, nothing will be, you, you will not get any results. The result will not appear uh, in the final output. The next chunk options, uh, this is very important because uh, the default uh, for our markdown is that error is always is set to false, but we can override this. This is very useful. Maybe we are compiling a document, we are getting error, but we, we truly want to debug uh, what is actually causing the error. So you can just say error equals true. So that means no matter the error, the, the documents will compile. So once you the document compile, we can now go through the outputs from the R Markdown documents, we will now get to know, okay, this is a particular chunk. Maybe I made an error here. You can now go back and fix that error. So it's very useful uh, if you want to debug. So it's always very useful to set error equals to truth in order for us to debug uh, the R Markdown documents. The next chunk here is warning. We can set warning to false. If we want to set, suppress any warning messages, maybe from our packages, or from different analytical pipeline in which we are running in our script. We can set uh, that any, if there is any warning, we can turn it, suppress it with this function. Uh, we can also set uh, the message. We can set any one, any message from, we can set it uh, to be false. We can set that option uh, to be false. I think uh, there are some se several outputs in, the, in the, my last section, I include the chip sheets. So the R markdown where we can get uh, several several outputs, several other arguments. So this one, I got this from the book. 
uh, yeah, the loaded library, I think GapMind, library GapMinder, then they, they call the data sets, then they look at the head of GapMinder, which uh, is going to print uh, the first uh, six rows. Then she also look at the summary, which is like a descriptive uh, statistics uh, to give us the minimum, the first quarter, the median, mean, third quarter, and the maximum value. Okay, for figures, how to include figures uh, in the R markdown document. So, so how to include uh, this. So there in the figure section, there are some several output formats. So if you want to, uh, if you are doing the GG plots uh, in the code in the code chunk, we can do use the fig.cap to set the caption for our plots. The plot caption within within quotes, we can specify. Maybe you can just give the caption for your figure. Then we can use the fig dot align to align to align our figure either to the left, either to center, or either to right. We can also use the fig the output width, output width or output height. We can set a default. So maybe here we can say maybe let it be eighty percent then we can set it to be 80%. So yeah, she made some, she did some demo here with the ggplot2 package. Uh, she was using the gapminder data sets where she called, she, she just did some filter, gapminder, which gapminder, which year she filtered for all the year that is equals to 2007 and she, she did it, just did a brief scatter plot uh, with John points and the X, she did the label for the X axis, which is GDP per capita, Y axis life expectancy. So she just have a default scatter plot showing the GDP and the life expectancy in the book. Okay, so here we can also, if we want to, if we do not want to use the Kenny app package to include figure. We can also include figures within the document. Maybe we, after rendering the plots, we can save the plots to a certain uh, folder. Then we can use the Knit app package. We can use it to include that plot in our, in our text. But if you do not want to use that approach, we can also use uh, this function, this other function, where we do within square brackets, we can just drop in the, the text, the text, then we, we specify the parts to where we are going to pick the image to embed in our documents. So this is just a workflow of how the R Markdown documents from the R, how we can move from the R Markdown documents to get our various output formats. Here we have a default R Markdown which the extension is always .rmd. So the Canada package is going to pick this RMD file, it's going to convert it into a markdown file. Then Pandoc is now going to pick uh, this markdown file to give us, uh, to render it uh, into uh, the different output formats, which we are, based on what we specify. I think uh, that is that. I, I've talked about the Kenya package. This is how we can do it here. If you want to include an uh, image uh, in our in our in our text, so we this is how we can include image. So also for tables, we maybe we are interested in including tables in our documents. Uh, though in the R Studio ID, there is a visual uh, the visual mode editor in which we can easily use the visual editor to include tables, even image, even link, even citation, we can use the visual mode. When I'm doing the demo, I will show all the walkthrough of all those steps. So we, in this case here, we are using the cable function that is coming from the Kenin out package. Then I just say head of the gapminder. Then I say caption, which is the first rows of the gapminder. So if I run this, so this is the default table in which we are going to get. This is the default table, which is uh, the first six, the first six rows. So here I have included the link. 
here I've included the link to the R Markdown reference guide. This is the link. I also include the link uh, to the R Markdown uh, cheat sheets. I think uh, that is done. Let me go back uh, to my R Studio. In the last section. Okay. Okay, so I still have this as our default uh, text. Maybe I was talking about uh, how to include an uh, image in the document. So let's let me create a section so that we see. Let me say level three header image. So let's say we I have I have dropped a folder there for image. So maybe here I can just say image. Okay. So once I am here, I just hit my tab. I think I have a folder for the image that I drop here. I have a folder for images that I drop. Let me see. Yes, I have a folder for image. Oh, is there, is there. I, I think mm -hmm. the auto completion is bad on text. Uh, if you want it, it needs to be in Knitter text. If you yes. are just using like a classic a markdown, yes, what you are using. I think the auto completion uh, is not working well. Oh. Yes, yeah. But if, if you do the same, like using a code chunk with Knitter, it will work, I think. Yes, let's try that. Let's try that. Code chunk is for me to come here and set a code chunk. R code chunk. Again, it's R. Include underscore graphics, then parts. Then let me say I want to use here. I think it's image. Yeah. And the image, which one? Let me just pick any one. So that's we'll drop the image there and remove this. I was talking about headers. You can say this is level two headers. So let me save this document. Though I will delete this document, demo dot RMD. So we have the demo dot RMD is for me to just render, click on the next button to compile. I think he's knitting the whole book, but we'll see. Uh, he's knitting the book. Let me I stop. I think so, but I could be wrong. Let's it's see. Like, in the book. Uh, uh, maybe I'm unsure. Like just second render. Maybe I'll use scan it out to render it. It's like yeah. it's knitting the book. Yeah. So maybe maybe maybe. No, maybe it's demo. Can... It's demo. Oh, it's demo. So we're good. <clears throat> Sorry, my bad. Uh, in viewer. Uh, it's not in the book. Oh. Let's use the Kenneth R at once. Uh, uh, my R Studio back. Let's use the Kenneth R. R. Question. Okay. Uh, let me Let's see. Kenneth R. 
the NIT function, the input is, I think it's demo dot RMD. Uh, the output, if not, let's see. It's not rendering. The outputs will be maybe demo dot html. Let's see. Okay. Yes, it's working. That's that's good example of all like to learn how to still learn the command line interface to uh, to. Uh, but it did not render. It did not. It did not render those documents. Yeah, it's rendering like it's it's opening. I think it's not render it properly. This is oh. not the right. Yeah. So. Maybe, oh, because you open it like in uh, HTML. Try, uh, can you say that open it to an edit web editor? I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Go back. Where is my house studio? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> uh, with that, demo, input. We have that, text. Yeah. Input, no, it's good. Uh, I think with patch, it's good. But like, what, what can you do in Notepad? Let's see. Notepad. I don't have Notepad here. Is I'm looking at the arguments which would under the current parts to oh, the. It's just file. the pass to the Notepad file. Uh, right. Why it doesn't? Maybe it's another. I will check on the same time. <laughs> is demo dot I think the output is going to be in HTML or Markdown, no? I'm checking also render function. This is a good question. <clears throat> Maybe you can try the, you know, the, um, the wrappers, Hector. Where was it? Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Maybe you can try to render HTML, render underscore HTML directly. You know, okay. knit, um, knit, uh, knitter, yeah, render uh, HTML. Yeah. Yes. Debugging. There's no arguments. Check the document. Yeah, just check it. Yeah, you're right. Because they have, they have wrapper function of uh, the one you use, but like, you know, they already have like the default, maybe some default. Uh, render, markdown, strict, false, fence, character. It does be, because I am used to render function, I just click render. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I don't know. Let, let's try it and see. They render HTML, there is no, no argument. Yeah, so let's so let's, let's see. Argument. Let's see if I can get the argument. No. Args with the S maybe. Uh, I don't know. No. Body. Uh, I think it's args with the S. Okay. I mean, could be wrong. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's difficult to remember everything. Uh, oh, well. no, they did not have there. There is no arguments. Just just try like passing like the, 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 file. the file to it and see what happens. Uh -oh. 
demo dot rmd no 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 arguments for that function yeah so maybe it's not this one like i will i will, I will check also um on the same time than you so maybe you can find okay render There's no argument. I'm reading, I'm reading. Say render. Function. Okay, it needs R. Render. Render. Oh, you can put all if you want. So it will render in all the format, which is nice. Strict fence. Let me just say ren demo. Just, just no. try render with the file of the with the file name. Render. Um, I will. I will. Cook, I will. Uh, I will. Cook just put it. it in the chat. Yeah, I will put it in the chat here. Um, render. Aaron, uh, that's demo uh, with a D majuscule, I think. Demo. Demo RMD. dot RMD. Just try that, maybe. Okay. I mean, you have loaded our Knita render. Like, I think it's an air markdown function. Let me check. Uh, yeah. It's an air markdown. Oh no, I, I put it in the chat to uh, Frederica. Um, why can I remove a key rig in fish? No. Okay, Everyone. let's use R markdown render. Yeah, R markdown. Uh, R markdown. Uh, Andrew. Okay, this will work. Okay, so we, we figure it out. Uh, this one will work. Demo dots. HTML. I think this. Oh, let's see. Um, not far. The, no, the no, problem no, is the, the, no, the, the directory. So you yeah, need to no put the full directory. Yeah, no input. Delete the file and no input. Uh, which is. Are you inside a project? Yes, yes. Yeah. The book. Well, when you use Knight, it, it, it builds a book, which is normal. Yeah. But we want just to build uh, one uh, one document. Why don't you do render? On it's rendering the book. The problem render is rendering the book. I want it to render. <clears throat> no, it's no, I got if you If you use build, Build okay, look at build. this is demo.rmd is rendering, but when I go back to check, it's rendering the entire book. Yes. Um no, the the other pages, if you didn't render it before, are empty. Is the book so you, it, is it, rendering it, the entire it, book in, instead of let me try this one on the charts. Yeah, the one okay. I passed you maybe is yes. good. You can try. It's like this will work. Uh, oh, call it air markdown HTML. <laughs> check mm -hmm. on the file. Let me check. Take the file. Uh, uh, yeah. Demo. Yeah. HTML file. Just try to open in web browsers. Yes, I think this one work. Okay. <laughs> we figure it out. <laughs> Perfect. So this one work. This was the link. Yeah. Uh, this one was bold. I think it's there. Where are the headers? Yeah. Okay, this was the image I include there. 
with the include underscore graphic function where I pass the parts. Uh, this was the level one header. So I think this, it worked. Good job. Exactly. <laughs> So we good. No, it was it was good. Like you know, it's happened all the time. Like when you try something <laughs> and it fell and you don't know why. But you we, uh, we learned some some stuff about it, so it's cool. Well, uh, let me check what's happened next week. Um, <clears throat> next week uh, will be. Doo -doo 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 -doo, let's open the. Next week is Federica with yes. The... Awesome. I think I signed up for some other chapter also. Yeah. I will probably sign for the Bayesian one, the boring one. So next week is Federica, perfect. Okay, thank you all. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it was good presentation. I, even if I know, you know, like Markdown, I still learned something, some stuff, and it was very <laughs> clear. No, it's true. Uh, even if I'm using like all day, like your presentation was very clear and it helped me like understand stuff that I misunderstood. Uh, just last, 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 maybe a piece, piece of advice <clears throat> uh, to um, sometimes you need to add two space, two spaces at the end of a line will go to next line. Then the yes. answer. Yes, yes, yes. This is how to remember. <laughs> Well, it was great. Thanks for the presentation. I really like. Uh, I've got a few stuff to. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Federica, Thank see you, you soon. And yeah. bye. See you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye and thanks.